I joined um, CDC, which is Center for Disease Control, in 2015, in January. I found a scientific writing uh, Friday, which was purely blocked for scientific writing, as in abstract manuscripts. And we kept that culture going for almost like a year. Unfortunately, we did not get a product from that, that structure. And I asked myself, why are we not getting what we asked for? Then uh, I tried to understand why from my supervisor and uh, from the, because we were collaborating with Cambry. I wanted to understand why, because most of the presentations done were, were from Cambry uh, side, but not from CDC side. And uh, when I did, I did structure survey to be able not to find exactly what's the issue. Uh, and the gap was very striking that people are not readily trained to be able to do scientific writing. They don't know how to do appropriate uh, desk review. Even the structure of the abstract from the introduction to methods to results and then the conclusion and how you tie that together. And why was that? You'll find we have, we have, we have doctors, we have we have master's students, but where is the gap between the two? So we did, I did sit down, talk to my supervisor, I structured out a training program for our, for our staff, for our internal staff in CDC. And now we, we expanded that scope to all the, the partners whom CDC funds. And within a year, we had a very, a very high peak in terms of the product coming from basically Western Kenya where the HIV TB burden is. And that was a point that we have a gap in knowledge, we have a gap in training, and that is what he capitalized on. And now we structured that from the quantitative research which most of, most of the organizations currently do, and we find that data is generated each and every day, each and every month, each and every year, and within a funding period, and you only report what the donor requires, but you don't contribute to public health research or public health knowledge through publications. And through that, it's very easy to be able now to connect the dot, what is working and what is not working. And I agree with, with, with Samuel that we present what the donor wants to hear, but are we doing justice to our community? That is the bigger question, and that is the elephant in the room. Because if we collect data, and we don't use that data to speak with it. As long as it's quality data, because there is one term which is called, mostly used, which is called garbage in, garbage out. As long as you don't have very good data collection structures in place, do you expect to use that data to give you anything meaningful? Of course, no. So we have to start with the way we structure our data collection systems to ensure that they are, they are, they are, they are, they are consistent with the quality measures which are required. Because you cannot use, for example, data. You're collecting data, data on, on uh, a specific gender. Then in the analysis, you find you have males and females, and yet you are on females alone. <laughs> so that's a quality. That's a, like you can be able to see a pregnant man. Where did that come from? So it's a quality issue. So we have to start from the basics, the data collection uh, piece, and ensure that is done well. And ensure that you have a, if, if it's an organization, you have a, a good data person in charge to ensure that, and you ask questions, because sometimes I, I, I sit in meetings and it's like, the, like let's say the, the research person doesn't care about the data, system, structure, structural design, but his, his, his interest is in, the, is in the, the output, which is the data which is coming in. But what, if you fail to ensure that the initial systems are set and they answer the correct questions, which you set to be able to answer from a research perspective or program perspective, then you communicate appropriately. Uh, initially, I, had, I was from research. I did HIV, TB, HIV research. I, I participated in the PrEP and the PEP. The PrEP and the, the PEP. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. In the pre-exposure prophylaxis. You remember the, the striking results about Truvada and Tenovavid, which came from Kenya? I was part and parcel of that Partners in Prevention uh, Research Group. And I learned something, that uh, if you structure out a research 
program or research very well. As in you, had, you do your, your very thorough background check, uh, background review, you ensure that you get where the gaps are and try to answer those questions appropriately. And then now structure the data collection process very well. Data quality control systems very well. Definitely, and uh, what we call the DSMB, is called Data Safety Monitoring Board, in place. In the African context, I'm sorry to say, I've never, unless it's there currently, observed any serious data, mon data safety and monitoring board to be able now to ensure the research done within the African context is at par with the global standards. And then the ethical review committees, are they able to review the safety issues which are coming from what we call the serious adverse events which are coming from the research as is, is going on? Do we have very serious uh, ethical committees to be able now to ask those serious questions from those uh, severe, uh, severe uh, 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 SAEs, serious adverse events coming from the, the, the research? It's unfortunately no. But the, the West, because we were, by then we were, getting, we were being safe, seriously monitored by University of Washington, there were specific questions which were coming out which our, our ethical review boards within the country could not be able now to pick. And that is where the gap is. So as we ask our questions, we need to look at the aspect of the capacity, which uh, I think Joan and uh, Doris talked about. Do we have the capacity within our country? Do we have the, the knowledge? Do we have structural systems in place to be able now to train our enthusiastic researchers to be, how to do appropriate uh, and proper protocol writing, <coughs> and guide them and support them in the process, and provide seed funding to encourage them now to move forward? With the, with the aspect of research. Um, the, other key, the other key thing is, uh, is the issue of culture. And I agree with Samuel that whatever works in the West, and because we do, uh, the way we, do, we, we are talking about doing uh, the desk reviews, we do them, but most of the lecture, le literature is coming from where? From the West. Our cultural, our societal norms are totally different from the West. So whatever is, positive or whatever drives a specific intervention in the West may not apply within our context, in the African context. And that is why we need to utilize our data which we are collecting or structure out programs or research which should be able to help us answer which factors or which areas are really working for us as, as Africans. And that way we will be able not to differentiate and be able to answer those specific nagging questions which are coming from uh, the various entities. And that way, I, I want to be able now to call upon, I know there are meetings which have been structured within the, the, the universities to be able now to help them to do the research. But I, only, I, I, I ask myself, I've, been in, I've, I've, I've gone to study in the US, I've been in the Europe, but one of, one of the key striking things is, and I, I think Shemir that Doris can be able to, 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 to agree to this, any publications from the West and Europe is money in the bank. But what about us as Africa? As in, you are paid for a publication because you are contributing to knowledge within that uh, continent or within that country. What about us as Africa? So we need to ask that question and see how best can we encourage those who are contributing to that 1% and we'll be able to see an increase in what we are asking for. But you can continue the conversation, but if you don't address the specific problems where we, which we are, we'll still be there. The other key question, and I ask myself is, yes, we have leadership in the universities. Have they, have they, uh, have they written a grant proposal? Have they been awarded anything? Because if you, lead, if you lead from a blind spot, are you able to bring light to that, to that institution? But if you have exposure, in research, you have exposure in funding, uh, writing funding proposals and getting money, then you will be able not to request each and every, even if it's a department or division, to be able not to come up with a research uh, arm which brings money to the university. And that way, the question of research in our institutions and even within organizations is going to, to increase.